2K20 tutorial number 19. Yes, this is our first freelance offense tutorial of the year and we're going to go through the basic setup and also selection. We will study in detail which freelancers are the most effective and efficient in the game and how you can best use them to suit your style. Now if you enjoy my tutorials and you would like to see more, make sure to click on the link above for my all 2K20 tutorials playlist where you're going to find more videos to help you improve your game and always have more fun. So you can have all the 2k moves in the world in terms of the behind the back, crossover, speed boosts, hop shots, fadeaways, but to make all of those work as best as they could, you're going to need to find the ideal spacing to properly complement those moves, right? So let's take a look at a trio of freelancers that I believe are really going to help you be efficient on the court. So this year, right, if you go to game plan, there's this brand new addition to 2K, like we have never had it before, and it's called Offensive Settings. And this is what you're gonna need to set up your freelancers properly. So go to Game Plan and select Offensive Settings. The first thing you're gonna see is this screen. Now, in terms of the coach settings, make sure you have it lined up as I have done there. If you do so, it's gonna give you the results you're gonna see later as I explain the freelancers to you. Uh, make sure you set the freelance series order to dynamic and the freelance series repeat to do not repeat. This is just to avoid uh, the computer keep calling the same freelance branches for you. But you'll be like, oh Sam, why don't I want that? Well, if you're going to spam branches anyways, then you might as well spam money plays. And I'll obviously teach you guys money plays down the line. We're not doing that today. Now, the next step is uh, the visual feedback settings. Make sure you have it as such so that you're going to get all the prompts and all the branches and all the routes you need to see the play vision and such. Like. That doesn't really apply too much here, but you should also have these just for you know defensive settings and money plays purposes in the future. Now, uh, we're not going to talk about the play selection today. Like here, you can actually select plays as you see fit and we're going to create a very good play selection, money play, playbook this way, but that's later. We're going to focus on freelance, so you can scroll over, click X on the freelancers, and you'll be able to select all of them. Like there's over like 30 in here, I think, and each of them has comes with explanations. So you can, you know, pick the ones you like, try them out, but all of your freelancers are essentially here. But the three we will be looking at today in detail are going to be two man action, four out one in active and bucks 2018. Okay. Now, so in game to select the freelancers you want, the specific one, click right on the D pad and then select, you know, the four freelancers or the three here that we have set up. So you can see the ones that we did set up on the offensive settings two men action, four out one inactive, and Bucks 2018 are there. Those are the three of them we'll be talking about today. So ignore them for 2018 for now. So in two man action, you can see this is a very uh, 2000 style of offense where you just essentially trying to make two guys score because you have two dominant scores and the other three guys is just going to kind of get out of the way. This is a very isolation and post up heavy style kind of offense, but it has its use in 2K20. Allow me to show you. So two man action don't have great freelance branches, so you don't need to focus on those. But what it does have that is absolutely fantastic is that it gives you awesome spacing for user triggered pick and row overloads with the power forward. So you can see I'm running a uh, pick and fade overload screen here between uh, Kawhi and Paul George. And you know it's an overload because you can tell as the play develops, one side is cleared for uh, Paul George and Kawhi and the other side is where the three guys are stacked. You run this pick and fade overload, the handler is gonna get baseline a ton. So initially attacking the baseline doesn't seem much, but if you're attacking the baseline with two man action like this, you're gonna get a lot of corner hop shots. And if you get the right guy for it, like Paul George, who whose hot zone is actually in this right corner, you're gonna be able to hit a lot of these hop shots or grab a free board because the guy your power forward is gonna either slip in or fade out and then slip in as the shot goes up. Now once again, I don't suggest using these branches if you're in two-man action. Just flow to the side and get into your uh, small forward power forward pick and fade or your forwards pick and fades or even with your point guard, you're gonna be able to get these off and you will hit more than you think as long as you get the right guy. So when you are in two-man action, you are 100% committed and using the power forward, or in this case, Kawhi, as the screener. So you're not just going to hold L1 for the screen, you're actually going to tap L1, tap R1, then select your power forward, in this case, Kawhi, to come up by holding triangle or Y, and run these pick and fades or pick and rolls if you want. 
but you gotta be using the power forward for these overload screens in two-man action. That's what the spacing is for, and that's all you can really use it for, but when you do do it well, it's absolutely disgusting. So next one up, we're going to look at Bucks 2018. This is set for ball dominant wing scorers who can score and distribute. Player example, Giannis attended to Punko. This is a isolation, heavy space out offense. And essentially, in 2K terms, this is a 5 out. It's always used for a 5 out. But in order to run a 5 out, you're going to need a shooting center. So someone like a Jermichael Green or Brook Lopez would do it. And here you see on the bottom, I have a we're in the timeout screen here, and I've circled up game plan for you, because you can actually call a timeout, uh, go to your go to your substitutions, and then you click triangle or Y to go to game plan, and then you do that. You actually will be able to select a specific set, or in this case, set just means freelance, the specific freelance you want in the timeout screen, so you don't even have to do it in game. So this is where you can actually make the switch to any kind of freelance you want that's on that list. So we have Bucks 2018 selector, and it's a 5 out. It is perfect for forwards who can handle with a stretch 5 center. So you can see the spacing, the floor is completely spread, the middle is left open, and our forward handler, in this case Kawhi, is ready to go. So we got Paul George in the same situation, Jermichael Green is spread out, and the paint in this freelance is always, if not almost always empty. So it's perfect for isolation up pops, take that defender on one-on-one, -on -one, hit him with ideal dribble moves, if you got a mismatch, just go to work with it, someone like Paul George and Kawhi will eat in this. So you can see Kawhi is back in this again, we hit them with the dribble move, we get by the defense, they stop there, we step back, but there's still so much room in the middle, we can do whatever we want in isolation situations. Like it's gonna be an iso fest, and some of the dribble moves you can see here are actually post patch, and I will talk about these new dribble moves later in another tutorial that works very well in iso, as you can see. But in this instance, I'm just showing you Bucks 2018 freelance, get a shooting center, get a forward with handling, that's ideal. You can use a point guard, but forward with handling is ideal, like a LeBron, Paul George, KD, Kawhi, Giannis. And just go to work and absolutely murder the mismatch. Like, also, there's a lot of space to send cutters. So, if the stacks up like there's this whole triangle or Y, send a cutter in. There's never anyone in the paint if you send in a cutter in this freelance. Like, if you hold triangle in this freelance and a cutter goes in, no one else is gonna cut in. So, it's perfect for like these kind of like flushy dumps. Uh, the branches are pretty useful. You should read and react because every branch that is triggered in this kind of 5 out box 2018 is about spacing or cutting in suddenly and then just backing right out if the cut's not there. You can see like there are some cutter routes being triggered because we're on dynamic but like I ignore it here so I'm not gonna hit any of these cutters. I'm not gonna hit the person cutting into the paint. I'm just gonna wait it out and if you wait it out they immediately back out and you get the 5 out again. Hit them with a dribble move as the cutter backs out. That's not even fair. And that's a new dribble move post pass, so I can teach you guys that later. So it's about spacing all the time in Bucks 2018. And what is essentially 5 out? Even the branches sometimes just gets you more space. The cutters will go in, but they will come right back out if you don't hit them. And then you can hit them with the dribble move and then you go in all of that space. And you can punish any mismatch you got. Or even if it's not a mismatch, if you got these dribble moves, it's pretty OP. So you got the behind the back, we split it with a Euro step. Check out the dunking tutorials, lay up tutorials to learn the rest. And uh, you, you will get the occasion, 1-5 spread pick and roll with some of these benches, especially if you have it on dynamic. But as you can see, the spacing is still excellent. So take what you want, read and react. But if you stand still long enough, you're going to get ISO 5 out space. Just get to work fast. If you see that 5 out space, just go to work because the cutters will leave. They won't stay in there. They will never post up. So if you're driving in there, everybody's leaving the paint and it's actually perfect for like drive kickouts, drive and dish. Just make your reads, get it back in the handle, bring them up top right in the middle here. See the cutter goes in, gets back out, you hit him with dribble moves, finish it up. Very, very nasty freelance for this kind of attack. And the third one we'll be looking at today is a four out one in active. And it is ideal that you're gonna need a uh, stretchy power forward for this, but in this case we have Kawhi, so we're okay. And this freelance is kind of like a hybrid between two-man action and the Bucks 2018, so that's why I want to show it to you. 
So you can see me uh, flowing in the 4 out one in offense here. I suggest you do handoffs a lot in this freelance. This freelance has very good synergy for handoffs. So to do handoffs, I just want to push and hold the left stick at George in this case while holding down turbo and circle. You do that, you're gonna dribble with the guy, you're gonna be a handoff or a pitch pass if you let go early, which is what I did here. And we can just flow right into these pick and rolls. There's nothing, so I work the ball back around. And you can see I'm in the middle of the court here. So I'm between the two elbows, right? Like, if you look at the two elbows of the paint, I'm still like in between it. And if you trigger a pick and roll while your handlers is in between the elbow like this, it's gonna turn into this kind of a uh, middle of the floor spread out, you know, four out one in pick and roll. And you can go right to work off of that. Handoffs are important though to start this offense. So you can see me do another handoff here. I'm pushing and holding holding the left stick at Kawhi while holding turbo and circle to get him the ball. Make sure you're holding both turbo and circle while you're running at the guy you want to hand off to. So I run right at Kawhi, let go early for a pitch pass, or hold it long enough for a handoff. But you can see this time, I'm out of uh, that area, those in-between elbows area. If anything, I'm on the sideline to the elbow, right? I'm at that area. And if you trigger a pick and roll, use a pick and roll in this area, what you're gonna get is, you're actually gonna get an overload user freelance pick and roll with any screen that you choose. So the four out one in is gonna give you those middle space of pick and rolls if you trigger them in between the elbows. But if you trigger them in between one elbow and the sideline, you're gonna get overloads. So that's very, you know, good for on the go, you know, hybrid offense. like. 4 out one in also comes with these quick hitting up court center screens and I suggest you use these because then it goes right into these you know perfectly spaced 4 out one in pick and roll just go right into it you see they're spacing it out for me half step land through a pass is OP I'm showing you guys that here I'll probably go into details of this later in another tutorial but you can half step kick in go to Kawhi in the corner that's a swish ball so that's using the branch up court and it's very useful in 4 out one in now you see this instance, I'm triggering the pick and roll in that area where I'm outside the elbow and sideline. So I get this overload pick and fade. But the freelance, because it's dynamic and not on static, these calls sometimes just get triggered on the floor, these boost circles. You don't have to use them. If you don't use them, they still trigger as you drive in. You can see they trigger the sp spread out spacing on the left side. So it's not an overload anymore, but it's throughout spacing. That kind of dynamic play call helped me out. Got a mantra set was no space for a dish off into a dunk. You can see another instance here, I got the ball with Kawhi, I cleared out of the corner, and because I dribbled out of the corner and into that side area, elbow to side area to trigger a pick and roll, this gives me an overload, in 4 out 1 in, okay, so you have to understand it. If you trigger it on the side and elbow, you get 4 out 1 in, but I'm going to run the overload anyways. Uh, the dynamic play call is up once again, I didn't trigger it, but this time uh, because it's monstrous hero in that low block, he didn't really space out anyways. So we kind of get this classic overload spacing. It's not ideal, but I still got Kawhi enough head of his team, you know, to trigger a uh, contact dunk because I used the right dunking finish there. So you can check out the dunking tutorial on how to do that. Now, you can trigger overload pick and rolls with the power forward and fall one in. But sometimes you're gonna be aware of these things because like if you look at it here, Montrez Hero is in the corner and I don't want that. So sometimes if you trigger these pick and rolls, if you don't use the center to screen in 4 out one in, the center, your center might end up in the corner. That's why two man action is better if you want an all out, you know, overload attack. But in 4 out one in, you can go middle or side, right? So you can trigger a spread pick and roll or overload. Uh, ideally, I think in 4 out one in, if you want to do the overload, then ask for the center to screen. In two man action, you're always asking for the power forward. In a 4 out one in, as to the center, at least you get a little bit better spacing there and better screening to attack the baseline, you will still find a lot of success. So this is a very hybrid kind of style of offense. You can still get these overload hop shots too, and you'll likely get a lot of free boards because that's just the nature of this shot. So 4 out one in has its use, but it's more hybrid. I suggest focus on finding the mismatch, hunting him down with the correct spacing, 4 out, 2 man, box, whatever it may be, then hit him with the perfect moves. Like if Kawhi's got a mismatch like this, like I get the center on me here, so I'm going to box 2018, I'm gonna hit him with a couple of dribble moves, get by him, use that space, and finish strong. All right, so initially, this is what I wanna to talk to you guys about freelance. This is how I've been using it. Now, can you use more branches and just, you know, be stuck on one all game? Sure. I'll probably go into detail of, you know, which freelancers you can do that for and how to do that. But I do believe the best way to use freelancers is this way. You kind of mix them throughout in the entirety of the game, trigger them using that spacing to trigger like, you know, ideal user pick and roll, pick and fades or overload situations or ISO moves. That's 
what I think freelancers should be used for. Because we have such a large body of freelance we can use this year, mixing them all like this is better. Like if you want to repeat like a route that is very good or like a set, then go money plays. And I will have money plays for you. Like if you want a money play for now, you can check out my passing tutorial. I got a money play in there. But get used to using freelance like this, get used to select them and setting them up in offensive settings. And uh, as always, thanks for coming by. Shout out to Bucks GG for the sponsor. And uh, once again, I'll speak to you guys again very soon.